All right, and I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining today. This is the STF, STIF committee meeting. Um, and we're gonna be talking today about uh, STIF uh, allocations for the discretionary funds as well as for the project funds. And we'll get into kind of what all that means. Um, I believe we are all familiar with everybody, but should we do a quick little um, introduction and say hi? Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Kevin Liberty, City Foot River Planning Department. Thank you. I'm Rita Rathke with Opportunity Connections. I'm Brad. I'm the Deputy Director of McKed. Hi, Brad. Hi, Letty. It's Patty Fink from the executive director here. How are you guys? Good. Thank you. Letty Valle, board member. Rob, go ahead. Yes, this is Robert Rostock, board member. Great. All right. We'll go ahead and dive in. And then uh, Patty will jump in if I for, forget anything or if there's anything else that needs to be expanded on. Okay. So, um first of all we just want to do a quick reminder of the the responsibility of this committee um so in uh september the board actually made the decision to combine the special transportation fund committee as well as the statewide transportation improvement fund committee together uh to align with uh odot's uh, 2019 action of combining the two programs to just kind of streamline the process uh, so the board members will be combining the bylaws for the two original committees in order to reflect this change and make it very clear as the purpose of this committee. Any, any question on that? Okay. Hey, Amy, is there going to be a new set of bylaws? Are we revising the two documents that were in the packet that was sent out? So uh, this committee will not be. Uh, the board members something um sorry uh the board members will be combining the documents and then uh we'll be approving it and then we'll uh send it out to you all okay thank you so yeah. to clar clarify it they they will be it will be a new new bylaw document uh, which combines the two together i think they're both pretty simil similar similar But yes, the goal is to have one that we can kind of live by. All right. So first, I kind of wanted to go through the uh, stiff discretionary and statewide network funding projects that were applied for. Um, I included a summary of all of these different projects in your materials. So I'm going to go by it through them real quick but feel free to ask any questions that you might have as to what they are. Um, because some of them, we CAT are directly uh, operating or, or uh, supervising. And then there's a couple of that McKet is actually uh, the one that applied for the funds, but we are giving match and in-kind support. Can, um, can yeah. I hop in just real quick? So yeah. the stiff discretionary is, is um, a fund that we have to apply through ODOT to receive. And that is different from our stiff formula. So we're gonna be talking about the stiff discretionary, which is our current application to ODOT. And then we also are gonna be talking about our stiff formula, which we, we don't really need to apply to ODOT for, but we do need to provide a plan as to how we're gonna spend the money. So just a clarification there. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the first project, the Columbia Gorge Express, uh, staff is recommending that we put that as a priority level number one. Um, so us, Pat, actually applied for these funds. And the purpose of the project is to preserve existing service levels on the Columbia Gorge Express service uh, along the I-84 corridor. So I think everybody's familiar with this at this point, but goes from the Dalles, Hood River, Cascade Locks, Multnomah Falls, and Portland, and then also stops at Mosier and Crockdale by request. Um, the other great thing about this service is that it has a lot of additional impacts on access management, 
parking and traffic congestion efforts uh, with numerous other organizations. For example, the Forest Service and how they are um, looking at uh, managing visitors at Manoma Falls. Uh, so that's a, that's a really important piece about this project. And so CAT directly operates this project. Uh, any questions? Anything to add, Patty? Okay. <laughs> All right, so the second project is um, the Gorge TransLink Alliance Mobility Management Project. And this is the one that staff uh, recommends as a priority level number two. Uh, so this one, NCAD actually applied for. Um, and uh, CAP contributes cash and in-kind contributions. So the mobility manager, and many of you know Kathy Fitzpatrick, uh, she works with five different counties to improve coordination, alternative modes of transportation, and increase service delivery to underserved populations. One of her big projects is the Gorge TransLink Alliance. That's what it's called, um, that she manages. And so it increases coordination with regional partners and providers, support and partnership building for a um, for agency pass and community outreach. A uh, super valuable position. Uh, Kathy has a, made it so that we have made progress in so many different projects and it's super valuable. Uh, and she is a NCAD employee. Mm -hmm. Any the only thing I would add on that one is that this is a continuation of funding and also adds a little bit more funding into the pot on this one. So um, that's, that's again, why it's a priority too for us because it's important um, to maintain what we have at, at a minimum. Brad, is there anything that you'd like to add for this? The only thing I'd add, it, it kind of pile on to what uh, Patty said, is that uh, we'd ask for like, uh, the CAD had asked for like uh, extra funds to try to make this a, like a 1.5 FTE position. Thank you. Important P. Okay. So the next one is the regional marketing project. Uh, this one is the priority level three. Uh, this was also applied directly by McKed and uh, Kat is doing match. Um, the goal of this project is to use marketing, public relations and outreach to businesses, transit partners and tourism partners to increase awareness, access, ridership and sales of the Gorge Pass, specifically and for the Gorge Transit Network more generally. So in case people aren't aware, uh, we, are current, we are working with four other providers, uh, that being Link, uh, Skamania County and Max in order to become one Gorge Pass. Uh, and everybody is on board, but of course, uh, all of those other different entities have to kind of go through the process in order to uh, join the pass. Uh, so we are hoping for about July uh, 2021 as when it would be the four agency pass. Um, so people could use the, buy the Gorge Pass and be able to use all four agencies. Uh, and so this project would help market that uh, primarily to the Portland market, uh, but also with the local partners in the Forge. Um, and so NCAD is, uh, will contract with an organization. Uh, we did learn today that there has to be a, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the word, uh, procurement process in order to find that uh, organization. Uh, we were originally hoping to work with Columbia Gorge Tourism Alliance due to all their, um, their connections and it aligns very nicely with their work as well that they're doing. Uh, but we also want this project to tie into local recovery efforts by offering and promoting discounts at local gorge businesses, transit to trail adventures and car free business opportunities. Did I miss anything, Patty or Brad? Any questions on this one? Cool. Great. All right. So, um, would 
the committee members like to uh, rank, so you don't have to, but if you would like to, you can rank the priority level of these projects. Uh, would you like to do that? Or? So you have three options. Um, so you have the option of approving all three, rejecting all three, um, or uh, and, um, and um, approving um, without priority and approving with priority. So um, it, 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 uh, um, the priority simply helps the region say, this is the one that's most important to fund first. Um, so that that is just uh, so that's what we're asking you to vote on. So again, you have the opportunity to reject them all, approve them all, and then approve them with priority, or or approve some of them and not approve others. Um, this is Letty. I'm, I'm happy to approve all three with those ranked priorities, and I'm inclined to do so because it feels like you need all three, or you need both of one and two for the marketing piece and the discounts. Um, does everybody else see that, or...? This is Kevin Liberty, City Quote River. I agree with Letty. Thank you. Uh, Rita, any concerns with that? Oh, I think you're on mute. Yeah, I am too. There we go. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I think we need all three. So I okay. agree. And you're okay with that, that priority level? Or yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Rob, how about you? I'm fine. Okay. All right, Brad? Say it again. Uh, Brad from McKen. I concur. Okay, great. All right, so we'll move along with, with the committee approving all three of his projects with the staff recommended priority level. And so we'll send those on to the state so they know that those are that's what we're recommending on. <laughs> I like the thumbs up. I forgot that you could do that. Uh, okay, that's great. All right, so the next uh, agenda item is to uh, look at the uh, poverty rate threshold for Hood River County. Uh, community members must confirm the poverty rate threshold uh, for the county. The previous SDIF plan defined uh, communities with a high percentage of low income households or high priority or high poverty areas as census block groups within the county that have 30% or more of households with an income level that is 200% or less of the federal poverty standards. Um, and we do have a couple of tables uh, to show that and illustrate that. Uh, and our recommendation is to uh, keep this definition as uh, there hasn't been any additional census data to, uh, to change this information since this was compiled. Patty, anything else? Just that the red areas on the map are, uh, oh, is that right? Um, the red areas on the map are the... I the, re the red areas on the map are, um, oh, I am sorry, I did not add that to legend. Yeah, um, I, I'm, yeah, because I, I, I'm pretty sure that, um, Cascade Locks falls into the high property threshold, so I am not exactly sure why that isn't isn't on this map. But uh, there are several um, several of these counties. So if we go back, I don't know why I I probably uh, yeah. If we go back, you'll see that um, census track uh, nine five zero one. Um, is one of the highest rates in uh, in the entire county of um, 50, 51 and 42% um, in those two census tracts, which is includes Cascade Locks. So, so that should be red. Um, 
and then uh, um, also I think um, uh, that well the red areas in the city um, you can see uh, over on the right hand side and those are correct and then I there's a couple of red areas um, if you go back to the thing the 954 census tract uh, yeah, there's um, block group one and block group two are also um, above that threshold, and that's the Odell area um, and parts parts of um, Upper Valley. So that map, for whatever reason, that map doesn't really do, do us justice, but <clears throat> that's the that's exactly the the way that census tract works. Howdy, this is Kevin Liberty. Thanks for the explanation. Um, I was I wasn't real sure when I was uh, looking through the packet exactly what I was looking at. It's helpful to have the explanation. Are the the dark blue lines? Those are the the highlighted lines in the table. Those that's, are the, that's right. Those are those are the ones that are above thirty percent, and you can see that on. Um, so we're required. Um, uh, yeah, um, total percentage of population at at um, the level of poverty. So anything over 30% should be marked here on this table. And the ones that are close to 30% are marked in light blue. Um, the other ones are, are marked in dark blue. And, and this threshold of 30%, this is the same threshold that was established maybe a year or so ago at the last time we had this discussion. Is that correct? Yes, that, that's correct. And, and part of our reasoning for keeping it recommending just to keep it is because nothing well other than COVID which uh, um, nothing has significantly changed um, in terms of our ability to track the, the different poverty rates um, so while it is probably likely that during COVID many more of these community uh, many more of these uh, census tracts are probably <clears throat> gone above the 30 percent range because we don't we can't track it right now um, in terms of um, actual numbers it's it's difficult to otherwise um, verify with the state so we're recommending just to leave it this way and then um, as we get additional numbers um, that are more on a census track basis we can update it great thank you all right um do you all feel that you have enough information in order to, to make that decision of to keep it uh, as we have previously defined? Yes, I feel comfortable with keeping it. Uh, okay. what, maybe I'm just not seeing it, but what year is this table from? It is from 2000, sorry. It, it is an analysis that we did um, in 2017 um, and is uh, directly um, related to uh, to the house household um, the census tract information and um, American Community Service data that we were able to assess at that time. So it was the latest and greatest information that was possible at that time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I feel it's relevant. Like you say, I mean, this year is going to throw a lot of stuff off, so which we don't have that number, so it'll be interesting. I'm Kevin Liberty again, City Foot River. Um, I'm just going to admit to you that I don't understand what the options are of changing that threshold. I know there was a debate about that at the uh, the discussion a year ago, and Dr. Kristen Dillon, I think, kind of uh, gave us some information that helped us settle on this particular threshold. But I don't have a reason to suggest there is a, a, a more appropriate threshold. So, um, so the, the options, um, um, uh, Amy, can you, um, let's look at the table. Mm -hmm. um, so the options are, uh, so when the state is asking us to set a threshold for poverty and um, They've asked us to use 200% um, above the federal poverty standard. And so as you will see, and, and the way they would like us to set a threshold is to, to, to choose um, 
to look at, at those areas and, and see if there's an area. I mean, 19% is still um, a, a high percentage of people above uh, that live in poverty, but it's, it's not the same as 51%. Um, so you could choose um, uh, or 10%, or for instance. Um, so you could choose to, and, and I think uh, Link has done that for their purposes. They chose to, to designate um, any, anything uh, that anything <clears throat> um, that, that their entire county is a poverty threshold. Um, so all of their all of their census tracts have been highlighted. Um, the the reason not to do that is um, because the higher poverty areas are areas that potentially you want to, to focus on and give additional attention to. So um, you might want to give more attention to, it's not, we aren't trying to um, not pay attention at all to the, the those focus, those uh, block groups that have 10% um, of, of, of 200 or, or above the poverty, but um, we want to give more emphasis to those that have more percentage. Does that, does that make sense? Am I? Sure. Um, put another way, if, if you reduce or lower that threshold, do you dilute service? Um, you don't necessarily dilute service, but you dilute how you're going to spend those dollars first. Hmm. So, um, so for, for instance, in in Cascade Locks, um, uh, one of the things that we chose to do is targeted um, uh, special services, and we had hoped to actually start that pre-COVID a, um, a, a circulator route in Cascade Locks because they um, they have a high percentage of people who live in poverty. And, and that was um, sort of a targeted special need area. Um, and we chose um, to spend our funds there rather than um, in some other area where there was a lower uh, poverty threshold. I, I appreciate the background. Thank you very much. I don't, uh, I don't have a recommendation to change that threshold. Um, and I appreciate staff's recommendation. Thank you. Rob? Do you have any concerns? Rob, are you still there? Hmm. All right. Uh, Brad, any concerns or thoughts? No. Okay. I think that was a no from Rob. Uh, Brad? Yeah, no concerns. And, and uh, uh, what uh, Patty articulated about uh, Wasco County is uh, correct. In the last cycle, they rejected the census track model and uh, just declared the uh, um, entire county as such. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we'll consider the, the same definition as confirmed by the uh, committee members. All right, next uh, we move on to the STS formula projects. So this is kind of where um, the difference between SDIF formula and SDIF discretionary is important. So the projects that we had talked about before, those are the ones that we applied for from the state. Uh, the SDIF formula, uh, these projects that we're going to start talking about, uh, we received a certain allotment uh, from the state every quarter, and we have the ability to spend those uh, dollars on the different projects that we said we were. Uh, there was a certain allotment uh, per project, but we can we don't have to necessarily apply for the funds. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. So the first project, there are six total projects. Uh, the first project was the Hood River City Route. Uh, so the that project is an ongoing project. It began in uh, June 15th in 2018 and includes ADA complementary services. Uh, initially, the service was 15 minutes every peak and 30 minutes off peak. And this was changed to every 45 minutes all day to reflect operational uh, challenges. 
and ensure that there was service throughout consistently throughout the day. Um, there are three transfer locations on this route uh, and the service was suspended due to COVID-19 between March 23rd and June 1st. Uh, since June 1st, we have been uh, running it. Uh, we did uh, stop it at 645. Uh, until so from June 1st till July, it the service ended at 645. Uh, but from July, we extended it to, or I'm sorry, November, we extended it um, until uh, 745. So the service is operating from now from 7 a.m. to 745 consistently throughout the day, every 45 minutes. Uh, this one was a hard one because when COVID hit, it uh it hurt because our second year ridership was trying to double the first year ridership and that was super exciting to us. Uh, so the, the COVID hit uh, was felt on this one quite hard, um, but we are excited to report that our ridership has been building again on this service. Uh, it's taken a little bit of a hit because of the recent uh, COVID activity, uh, but it is, um, it, Definitely the ridership was strong. So we're proud of that. Any questions on this uh, service? Or anything to add, Patty? Um, no, I <clears throat> think that um, uh, we did make, I, Amy is correct, we made some operational changes. Um, we are um, planning after COVID to go back to a 15 minute peak and we're hopefully planning <laughs> to do that in coordination with the city and their parking man their, their them rolling out their parking management plan. They've asked us to do um, a few uh, changes to make the peak hour service a little bit more direct. Um, and so we do have that in the works um, and that should get us back to the 15 minute peak. Um, we feel uh, like the 45 minute um, off peak has um, been able to sustain ridership and we um, we're um, looking forward to moving forward on the ridership level we um, uh, were um, so we were at ninth we were at 5,000 the first year uh, number of riders that we took 9,000 this year um, and that was through February so the highest ridership months we didn't even get to count. Um, so we were um, pretty excited about probably uh, easily doubling our ridership um, uh, before uh, before COVID hit. So um, I think this is a really exciting service and we're very excited about it. And uh, all those numbers for these six projects are, as well as additional information, we're in the meeting material packet. It's uh, labeled the SDIF end of year report in case you were curious. And it will give you all those specific numbers as well for ridership. All right. Thank you. Oops, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. Okay, there we are. Project number two, Rider Recruitment Program. Uh, so status of this is completed. Um, the, the main goal of this project was to do a complete brand refresh and it has allowed us to spread awareness of CAT in general and our different services. Uh, Blue Collar, which is a local marketing firm, was hired in 2019, and uh, they were the ones that were in charge of the new rebranding. Re uh, in July 2019, we launched a new website, uh, which had improved design and user interface. So it was much easier for uh, users to uh, get the information that they needed. Uh, additionally, um, staff work with the Hood River County School District in order to spread uh, student awareness of transit and how to use it. And it's kind of linked to our free, our student free fare program, uh, where all middle school and high school students in Hood River County School District schools uh, are eligible for free gorge passes. Uh, unfortunately, of course, because of COVID, we've had to basically completely stop uh, the outreach for students. Uh, students continue to have access to the free fares uh, program, 
and uh, we are working with the school district in order to ensure people are aware of the program. And we just changed the logistics a bit about it. Uh, myself, so at the planning and development manager was hired in October 2019. Uh, part of my duties were to ensure a consistent engagement with the community through digital and local channels. Uh, so I've done that through uh, consistent social media messaging, uh, newsletters, and then of course before COVID, uh, doing uh, different community events. Uh, so the impressions and website uh, new users had steadily increased until COVID. It dropped off because we uh, kept our messaging very uh, health related and informing the public of what public or what transportation services were available. Um, but since COVID, well, since July, we have started um, doing messaging again, but we have kept it very COVID appropriate and also making sure people know um, how to support local businesses, uh, how to ride the bus in the times of COVID, uh, and what are the services available to folks as well. Patty, did I miss anything? Just to clarify, none of the funds were used uh, to pay um, Amy's salary. That was out of local funds um, uh, and a lo our local budget. It does not, it was not used. Skip formula was not used for that purpose. All right, the third project. Uh, it was targeting rural service for a uh, special needs population. As uh, status is ongoing, uh, some key points of that is uh, we added a bus stop at the Y East Middle School, uh, which launched in January of 2020 uh, in order to uh, make it possible for uh, students to get to after school activities where they didn't have other transportation options, uh, as well as um, the Cascade Locks Community Shuttle, which was scheduled to be implemented in the summer of 2020, uh, but that was delayed due to COVID, and there are extra funds in this project, uh, which we'll get to later, uh, but because we weren't able to launch that yet. Um, and uh, it allows students to have access to the free fair program um, in the schools that are doing comprehensive distance learning. Uh, Patty, anything else? No. Okay. Um, all right. I'm sorry. Is there any questions so far? No, thank you. Okay. All right. So the project four was for expanded evening and weekend service. Uh, we did not end up doing the weekend service uh, as of now. Um, and evening service was impacted a bit because of COVID, was where we're all planned things. Um, we just were not able to implement them quite yet. Okay, so the low income fair program is another ongoing uh, project. Uh, on February 4th, 2020, uh, we introduced the low cost forage pa transit pass. Um, making transit easier, uh, more accessible to folks in general. Uh, but part of it, we had a discount, a 50% discount on the fixed route gorge pass for community ID holders, which is the, the next door community ID program. Um, and there are also donated passes from community members and businesses uh, that we distributed to low income community members uh, through the next door and uh, the Hood River County Veterans Office. Any questions or anything else? Okay. All right, so the sixth project was capital expansion and a replacement program. Uh, it's been completed. Uh, we purchased two vehicles in January. The drivers love them, super reliable, and they're great. Uh, yeah, and so the only thing I would add on here is that, that this was match money, so it, it, it um, allowed us to provide local funds to match federal funds for um, the full purchase of those vehicles. 
and also included a small amount of um, um, funds to lease uh, um, uh, the MCI bus um, for the um, Gorge to Mountain Express so that we could start it on time. Yeah, thank you. All right, okay. So now that we've talked about um, all of the different projects and you know where we are, uh, we wanted to look at um, what that looks like cost-wise and expense. What, where do we still have some remaining funds? Um, and there's the, and I, again, I'm sorry, I know this is probably pretty hard to read. I will be sending this out um, on the 14th with all the meeting minutes. Make sure you guys can easily. Okay, read Amy, this. can you um, at least uh, um, uh, enlarge it? Sure. I or or so. put it on the screen share. On the on the. In theory, I should be able to hold on. Um, Is this something better? Is this, I don't know. Is this too much? Well, it's, it's, it's definitely more readable. Okay. Um, but so this is the way the projects were ranked last year and th that, that reflects um, the amount of money that we allocated um, the, if, for, for those of you who remember last year, we actually had to allocate it by year. And um, this is just a total of the full allocation that was made towards the different projects. So, so uh, as Amy said, um, in the Hood River um, City route, we have no money left uh, or will no, have no money left by June. Um, in the marketing program, we have about $34,000 left. Um, in the uh, um, special needs service, that's the one that was um, set aside for Cascade Lock Shuttle. We have about $175,000 left in our um, coffers for that and um, uh, 120, um, what was that for? Uh, oh, increased weekend. Right. Sorry, increased weekend. Sorry. So that that is also a carryover to next year. To in, in we had planned to do the um, weekend service beginning in June, and of course with COVID, uh, we opted not to do that at all. And the other two programs we fully uh, will expect to spend out um, by that amount. So the full carryover that we plan to carry over into the new GIF plan is about $330,000. Any questions on this? Okay. All right. So, oh, I'm gonna take this off. Hey, hey Amy, I'm just wondering yeah. if you can, can actually do it in a PowerPoint slide. So I I tried oh. doing that earlier and it was maybe, maybe I can do that. Okay. No, it's fine. I, I don't want you to crash anything, so all right. Um, can you see anything? No. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you are. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. So this actually gets me to the slide I need to, so perfect. <laughs> um okay, so Keeping that in mind, uh, those different projects where our status is and the money left over, um, we wanted to remind everyone what the um, cord what this group decided through the coordinated transportation um, plan update process of what were priorities, what were projects that the community wanted us to work on, um, and when we were going through these. Uh, we found that uh, a lot of them, or some of them, would make most sense to be uh, put in the SDIF project. So for the next biennium, so 21, fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 2023. Um, 
and then some of them are actually would work in some of the other grants that we apply for, will be applying for this year um, and funds that we have access to. So for the first priority information, improved awareness of public transportation services. Uh, the objectives were provide ongoing information regarding service schedules and routing, um, which can be done with our current uh, financial resources and uh, capacity. Um, ensure riders feel welcome and safe using public transit, um, which we could use uh, STIF formula funds as well as uh, to apply for 5310 funds. Uh, pursue outreach and partnerships with vulnerable populations, uh, which we can use 5310 funds, STIF funds. Um, and and yeah. the state transportation option program funds for. Any, any questions about these guys? Excuse me. There we go. We need to fix that. <laughs> it's just the conference room is inside the animal ring as well. All right. So again, this is just a reminder of the ones that the, um, had been uh, decided by through the coordinated transportation process that these were priorities. Um, and so the next priority for services, maintain and expand services to ensure equity in meeting community needs. Uh, the objectives sustain existing transportation services uh, can be done through a portion of SDIF funds. Uh, expand operating hours and evenings and weekends uh, would make sense to fit in SDIF. Uh, expand transit to meet the needs of seniors. And again, it would make sense to uh, use SDIF funds for this. Increase access to Highway 35 communities. Uh, more information required for this and to be part of six figure uh, 24 at uh, SCF. Uh, increased access to medical services outside of Hood River County uh, and those 5310 funds and as well as CARES Act funds can be used for that. Uh, increased access to transportation services within Cascade Blocks. It'd be great to use SCIF funds. Uh, improve access to downtown Dallas. Uh, it's within the existing budget and diverse cat operation staff to better reflect the community. Again, this is within the existing budget. All right. So the priority for capital maintain and expand capital assets to improve efficiency of transportation system and enhance rider experience. Uh, for the objectives, ensure vehicle fleet safety and maintenance. Uh, you can use 2310 and other FTA grants for this. Uh, permanent shelters, seats, and signs at each rest stop. Uh, we can use 5310 for implementing communication uh, to increase stop accessibility for individuals with different levels of mobility. We can use the existing budget. Uh, improve dispatching technology, uh, 5310 funds or SDIF funds. Uh, improve the sustainability of the CAT fleet. Uh, no low grants or a 5339. Uh, and expand facility capacity. Uh, essentially 5339. Uh, so sorry, it's kind of a lot of numbers, uh, but basically the, the thing to know is there's some of these projects that fit very nicely in upcoming grants, and there's some that fit very nicely for SDIF formula funds. And the last priority for coordination is partner with local and regional organizations to create connections and develop a transportation network within the forage and beyond. Uh, continue fostering and developing transportation and partnerships. We use the existing budget. Uh, partner with employers, tourism organizations, and businesses. Use SPIF discretionary funds, so the ones that we actually have to apply for. And access to other transportation services for vulnerable populations, existing budget. Uh, improve multimodal options within Hood River County. Use the existing budget. And then coordination of local and regional planning processes. Apply for 5304. Uh, any questions on that? I know I went through that really fast. Okay. No questions for me, thank you. All right. Okay, so that brings us to uh, potential options for the SDIF 
formula uh, projects for fiscal year uh, 2021 through fiscal year 2023. So uh, up, can you guys read this fairly okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so at the very top, it's kind of ongoing or uh, service uh, funding needs. Uh, so continue the Hood River local fixed route and complementary ADA service. Uh, the idea would be to add the evening and weekend service to this project. So instead of having two, it would just be one. Um, and and, so and that I just, I just want to be clear that the committee last year recognized that if we were going to fund service, um, and um, that that there was a level of ongoing funding that would be required from our stiff um, funds. So unless the service was a real uh, a total mess, we um, we opted, and and none of them were. They all were pretty productive. So we're recommending that, that we maintain that funding for, for all the services and projects that, that were ongoing that we started last year, just for continuity. And um, thank you. And then the, the second uh, low income fare program. So it's a continuation of what we have been doing, uh, offer subsidized transit fares to low income individuals participating in social service agencies, school districts, or other organizations dealing with poverty in the gorge to ensure access to transit uh, in Hood River County. Uh, and there will be $20,000 in fiscal year 22 and $20,000 in fiscal year 23. Um, and the next project is targeted service to low income and transit dependent populations in high poverty areas in rural areas outside the city of Hood River. Uh, so that includes the Cascade Locks um, uh, community shuttle, uh, as well as uh, providing after school activity uh, buses in the communities Odell and Cascade Locks and Parkdale um, and other unincorporated parking of Hood River. And that would be $125,000 in fiscal year 22 and $125,000 in fiscal year 23. And so that would be a total, so, so the service and other ongoing funding projects, be a total of $395,000 uh, each year. And then the other projects based on uh, the coordinated transportation plan, but as well as the transportation master plan, uh, we're outreach to vulnerable populations with targeted marketing for low income minority aging people community. Uh, and that would be $50,000 each year. Uh, maintain existing services, so ensure any revenue losses due to COVID 19 are covered and the district has the ability to match grants. Uh, so some buffer room, uh, $100,000 for each year. Uh, capital replacement and expansion program. Uh, so we'll be supporting maintenance and expansion services uh, for our vehicles, make sure they're in tip top shape and potentially uh, replace vehicles. And so it'll be 30,000 or for um, grant matching to replace vehicles. So it'll be $30,000 in each year for that. Uh, ADA access improvements. This is where we would work with the city to enhance wheelchair access and other ADA improvements near bus stops. Uh, within the city of Hood River, Cascade Blocks, and Hood River County. And there's $100,000 allocated uh, to each of those years. Uh, so hopefully that makes the city happy. Um, that was an exciting one. Uh, and then also a new and improved dispatching technology. Uh, implement new dispatching technology that allows for efficient routing or fixed routes and dollar ride and includes real-time technology at bus stops and on-demand scheduling. And that'd be $20,000 allocated for each year for that. And then uh, also we have the option of putting a capital reserve fund in here. So in case there's any remaining funds, uh, they could be placed in this category uh, to help fund a new capital building, vehicle replacement, or the summer poly service. Uh, so the total total uh, for each year would be six hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars. 
And, and that includes the 330,000 that we carried over and is also reflected in both the, um, the uh, tar targeted service to low income and transit dependent and the um, influx of uh, additional dollars that we put into the Hood River local fixed route and complementary service. So those those are just carryovers from last year for initiatives that we were unable to fund because of COVID. So they've they've been already been added in, up at the top. <clears throat> um, and in in last year, um, we uh, the last go round, we were told to plan for both. 100% of the allocation and 130% because the state um, was unclear uh, as to how much money we would actually receive. And so that's why Amy was talking about any additional funds. Um, we've been told this year we don't have to do the 130%, but I still think it's not a bad idea to throw that in as, a, as, a, as an option um, so that if there are any remaining funds, we. Um, or it, we do happen to get over COVID quicker than we anticipate that, that those funds would be able to be allocated to there. Any questions or concerns with these projects? Um, thank you, Patty and, uh, and Amy. Uh, quick question for you. This is obviously the, the expense side um, the revenue side matches up with this, correct? And, and second question, what's the role of this committee at this time with respect to this list of projects? So, great, good question. So at this point in time, uh, we would like the committee to see if there's any additional, or if there's any additional projects that should be on here, we would like to know. Uh, we will have we will be having another meeting in January uh, to approve these recommendations that will be sent to the board for final approval at the January meeting. Uh, so right now it's just to kind of look review if there's any additional projects that need to be on here uh, to let us know by the next meeting in January so that we can add them and then at that meeting is when we will ask you guys to approve these to be recommended to the board. And, and so um, at the very bottom, uh, maybe Amy, if you could scroll a little bit further, or maybe you can't, but at the very bottom, there's um, there's the total amount at 100% and at the total amount at 130%. So the total amount at 100% includes the FYI uh, carryover, which is 330. And then, oh. Sorry. That's all right. And then we expect um, uh, the state is telling us that we're going to receive about 515. Uh, my eyesight is really bad, but 515,000 in FY uh, 2022 and 542,000 in FY 2023. For a total of one million three hundred and how much, Amy? I can't see it. One million three hundred eighty-eight and eighty-seven dollars. And so, in answer to your initial question, they sh uh, fiscal year twenty-two and fiscal year twenty twenty-three should add up. That's um, Thank you. I have a question about the uh, ADA access improvements. Um, I understand your your. So you're adding that to what a, what the city would, would be using as well? It would be our hope, yes, that we could work out an arrangement with the city where maybe our funds could be used as match funds for larger projects. Uh, have those projects been identified at all or? Um, I think the city has a list of projects that it, it wants. Uh, Kevin, sure. you wanna take that one? Sure, we've got um, a transportation system plan that does list projects, but we also have projects that just fall outside of it. And this comes up a lot, Rita, where people are interested in redeveloping property. Uh, for example, One Community Health recently um, uh, redeveloped their facility and um, 
the a combination of both city regulations and ADA requirements trigger uh, the developer of the site to upgrade things like ADA ramps and street intersections. Mm -hmm. And not only adjacent to their site, but also across the street, uh, which makes sense, of course, if you um, need some assistance with the accessibility. Right. But those expenses can sink projects. And so we had uh, suggested as we were working through um, uh, our relationship and, and uh, priorities earlier, if there were opportunities where um, CAT and the city could work together with the development community at the time of development to make these types of improvements near transit stops, we, we could actually get some things done. And uh, so this is really exciting for me to see these numbers plugged in here. If this works out uh, and it isn't taking away from other projects um, mm -hmm. based on what the rest of the group is, is seeing here. So I appreciate seeing it in, in the budget at this time and look forward to, to hearing how, how people respond to it. Okay, thank you. And, and so we, we're, we're wide open to any other ideas, Rita, you might have in terms of, of service or enhancements that, um, that might be effective for the community that you serve. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we're, we're just trying to react to what we were heard from the community at the Coordinated Human Services Plan but we're also understanding that, you know, life life doesn't always happen to coincide with a plan. So if there's something else that uh, that is particularly, you know, um, urgent, and uh, um, please please let us know or let Amy know. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any additional questions? Okay. So the two things that we'd like you to do for our next meeting, are your homework, so to speak, <laughs> is to, to look, <laughs> look at these numbers and make sure, um, you know, uh, Kevin, if 100,000 doesn't seem like near enough, um, then you might come in and, and say, well, I'd really like to see this um, have more money in it um, or less money in it because I don't think we can spend 100,000. So those, are, those are, would be important. And then again, as I was talking with Rita, if there's something in here that that um, that isn't some project that you really would like to fund within the next two years that isn't already in here, um, please um, let us know what it is. And then also, if you want to give us an idea of how much you think it, or we can work together on the cost, and we can put it forward doesn't mean that necessarily that it will get funded, but at least the committee will have the opportunity to vote on it and say, uh, this is more of a priority than something else. Thank you. And, and Amy, you'll be um, distributing this information on the 14th, is that correct? Yes, I'll make sure that the meeting minutes and all of these graphs are easily uh, able to be read um, and as well as just detailing again the, the homework assignment. Great. Okay, yeah, with a, <laughs> if in the, the homework assignment, you can give us a deadline. That always helps me. Thank you. Yes, we'll do. All right. Um, so move along. Resistant next steps, which we've covered. Uh, so the, the meeting in January, we are hoping for early January. Um, we can do this two ways. I can send a quick doodle out today before I leave. Uh, or if you guys want to throw out a time and date uh, right now, we could also do that uh, to get it on the book since it's probably going to come up fairly quickly. So, so we do need to have the meeting um, before January 20th. Because that's the board meeting, and the the STIF um, plan is due to the state on um, February first. All right. I, I guess um, I would just throw this out. If it's possible to do it in the first week in January, uh, I think sooner than than later would uh, would be great. Thank. You. And 
do we like this meeting time of 3.30 to 5 or does earlier work better? This works great. Okay. Yeah, 3.30 works well. Agreed, thanks. And you know, first week in January is good because we're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, do we tend to like Friday as the day? Or is there another Friday that's better or another day? Friday does work for me, thank you. Okay, yeah. All right, so how about if we tentatively say that first Friday in January, and I'm not looking at calendar, so I'm sorry, I, I don't know what that date is. It's um, the 8th. The 8th? Uh, so tentatively Friday, January 8th at 3.30. And then if there's any concerns, people can, can send me a message and then we can adjust. Thank you. All right. Cool. And I'll go ahead and send that out uh, before I leave today so it's on everybody's calendar. Okay. All right. Are there... Any other questions or concerns or anything I might have missed? No, thank you. There's a lot going on and I appreciate you, Amy, Patty, and Rita, Kevin, everybody for participating and helping with this. Agreed. Thank you very much, everybody. Great work. Thank you. Um, well, with that, I will go ahead and end this meeting early and give you 27 minutes back to your life. And thank you very much for joining and we will see you soon. Okay, thank you. Have a good break, Amy. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, have a good break. Bye, Brad. Thank you too. Yep. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Hey, Amy. <laughs> All right, so let me pause our, our recording. Okay. Stop recording. Yes, that would be good. <laughs>